So an introduction to 4HQ, this system of educating about Israel. This was a system which I developed whilst working with the fantastic team at Makom, the Israel Education Lab of the Jewish Agency, and so uh, full credit also goes to Makom. We might say that there are four major challenges that we are facing in the world of Israel education. There are probably more, but let's just aim for dealing with four of them. The first challenge is a simple way of grasping the complexity. How can we, as educators, introduce our learners into such a complex subject and place as Israel, whilst at the same time keeping it as simple as possible without oversimplifying things? A simple way to grasp the complexity is challenge number one. A second challenge is about politics. On the one hand, there seems to be a desire to avoid politics, but then at the same time, avoiding politics is basically avoiding Israel. The whole idea of Zionism was that the Jews would take power for themselves because they were powerless and that wasn't doing the Jews much good in the world. And the way that we negotiate power is through politics. So to avoid politics entirely is kind of missing the point. And at the same time, to only focus on politics doesn't make sense either because Israel is far more than only its politics. Thirdly, we're looking at the Hillel tension. If I am not for myself, who will be for me? But if I'm only for myself, what am I? And if not now, then when? So this tension of looking after us and looking after all, this tension between the particular and the universal, this is a tension that has turned into a conflict rather than something generative. And nowadays, if you're interested in looking after us, that means that you are a bigot. And if you are interested in looking after all, that means that you're a traitor. Whereas Hillel was pointing towards the idea that both these values must live in creative tension one with the other. And finally, we need to find a way to speak not only to Jews. Most of our young Jewish people around the world spend most of their time with mostly non-Jewish people, their friends and their family. And so we have to find a way to talk about Zionism, to talk about Israel in a way that is expressible to the entire humankind and not just Jewish humankind. So one of the ways that we went about this to try and find out what's going on with humankind and not just with Jewish kind is that across the world, we went around asking people to share what is in your feed, ignoring sports and entertainments, nothing to do with Jews and Israel, what's on your feed, what's on your mind. And so people would just shout out stuff, climate change, gun violence, terrorism, obviously things that got shouted out varied according to the political situation at the time. America first, minority rights, refugees, immigration, democracy with a question mark, facts with a question mark, racism, corruption, border controls, freedom of speech, breakdown of law and order, nuclear war, remember North Korea, Me Too, staying alive, in the corona covid days health system priorities closing down borders led us out of our houses vaccine nationalism let me breathe and take my mask off all these issues got thrown up onto a whiteboard and then we took a look at them and generally speaking we could see that there was a kind of a clustering of four key let's say questions that were underlying these concerns that people had about their lives. Concern number one was about safety. How can I be safe from either gun violence in the streets or the police or nuclear war or terrorists or COVID? How can we be safe was one question that people were asking themselves. They were also asking themselves about we, about collective identity. Who are we and who's in and who's out? And at the same time, how do we deal with people who are not us. For example, is there a way that we should treat Americans which is different from the way that we should treat any human being in the world? Is there a way that we Americans behave which is unique to the way that America should be? The third set of questions is to do with freedom, our democracy, our freedom to choose those who make choices for us. 
And then finally, this question about our territory. How do we relate to our territory? The borders which define our territory. What crosses these borders? Who decides where the borders are? Can people cross these borders? borders and what kind of people and what do we do with carbon emissions which totally ignore these borders that we've assigned to ourselves. Four key questions that are at the heart of what most of us are thinking about these days and one of the ways that we can test this is we can ask ourselves how did President Obama tend to answer these four questions about America? about safety and security. How did he tend to answer these questions? The questions of what it means to be American and how we should behave in an American fashion about freedom and about our borders and our land and our climate. And how did President Trump answer these four questions of security, of who we are, about freedom and about our territory and borders? It's maybe a little bit early to find out what President Biden is saying in answer to these four questions. But what we can already pick up with the set of answers that we received from President Obama and the set of answers that we received from President Trump is that we kind of got two sets of totally different answers to the same four questions. And from this, we can gain this understanding that we agree on what we argue over. There is a unity in our disagreement. We agree on what's important. We're just not agreed about what we should do about what's important. And so how has this got anything to do with Israel? Well, we can look at these four questions and roughly speaking, and it's never an exact science, of course, roughly speaking, we can map four key Hebrew words onto these four questions. And we can say this question of safety is about being, to be or not to be. And who are we? Is people free in our land? Liyot am hofshi ba'artzenu. You probably recognize these words from the penultimate line in the Hatikva national anthem. Liyot am hofshi ba'artzenu. And so we have this sentence that we might say is what defines the pro-Israel tent, the Zionists, um, people who are OK with Israel. We are OK with the sentence. We're happy about the sentence that we should be a people free in our land. This is a kind of a universal aspiration, really. We can talk about the Kurdish people who are struggling to be the Kurdish people free in the land of Kurdistan. The Catalonians are still struggling to become or to be the Catalonian people free in the land of Catalonia in the south of Spain. The Scottish people were given the opportunity to become the Scottish people free in the land of Scotland, um, but they voted against it so far. And at the same time, we can look at the Palestinians. And one definition of Palestinian nationalism is that the Palestinians wish to be the Palestinian people free in the land of Palestine, whilst we, the Jewish people, the people of Israel, wish to be or continue to be the people of Israel free in the land of Israel. And there, right away, we have a key question, because if there are two peoples who wish to be free in their own land, but that land happens to be exactly the same geographical piece of land, then already we have one of our questions. How can it be my land when it's also your land? And so where we go with this sentence is that we might agree on the sentence, but we may argue about the way in which we answer the four words that make it up. To be, to be safe, security. There are endless arguments and questions about what's the best way for Israel to be safe. What's the best way for us to be safe against the COVID pandemic? What's the best way for us to be safe against our enemies? Should we have more offensive weapons or more defensive systems? Big questions which we don't agree on. What about the Jewish people? 
well, first of all, this question of religion. Is the Jewish religion in Israel playing out the way that we would like it to play out? Is it too orthodox? Is it not orthodox enough? Is it pluralist enough or not pluralist enough? Questions of solidarity. Are Israeli Jews looking out for Jews around the world the way that we would like them to? Did Israel offer to share COVID vaccines with Jews around the world? Should they have done? And of course, crucially, how is the Jewish people relating to people who are not Jewish, in particular the people who are not Jewish within the state of Israel, some 20% of its population? Questions of freedom and democracy. You may not be aware of it, but we have some allergy and addiction to elections. And is that a great thing or not a great thing? At the same time as continuing to be ridiculously creative. And finally, our land. Where are our borders? We still argue about where our borders are. Is the Green Line a border or is the Green Line a memory of something which is now irrelevant? Four massive questions which allow us to agree on the sentence to be a people free in our land and yet to have questions and arguments about each four of the words that make up this sentence. So let's play 4HQ, these four Hatikva questions, four Hatikva questions, four HQ, with this cartoon that was created by Shai Charka. So on the left there is Ahmed, a Palestinian guy, sitting having a coffee in occupied Palestine, the West Bank, having a coffee with his Jewish settler friend, Charta. And Charta would say that he's sitting in Judean Samaria, in Greater Israel, having a coffee with his friend, Ahmed. How is it that we can sit here drinking coffee together while our two nations can't stop fighting each other? Wow, man. It's all because of politics. Believe me, if me and you were in charge, there'd already be peace. And then in the next frame, we get an image of what peace would look like if these two guys were in charge. Says Ahmed, if I were in charge, I'd bring you all into Islam and we'd live here like brothers. And says Charter, and I'd give Jordan to you guys so you could turn it into a democratic Palestinian state like you learned from us. Check that out. There could have already been peace. Wow, man. Now, one of the wonderful things about this cartoon is, of course, that we have two totally opposing visions of peace, right? And at the same time, this is a gorgeous image of what peace would look like were there some way to organise it. But let's break it down into 4HQ, into the four Hatikva questions. What's Ahmed saying? He's saying, if I were in charge, I'd bring you all into Islam and we'd live here like brothers. So he's saying that we would definitely live. You would not be Jewish anymore. You'd be free, providing that you freely agreed to undergo this conversion, and you would be in your land. You'd get three out of four. And then, of course, a Charter is giving a different kind of answer. I'd give Jordan to you guys so you could turn it into a democratic Palestinian state like you learnt from us. So you can be, you can live, you can be Palestinian, you can be democratic, you just can't be here. Again, assuming that you freely move across the border into Jordan. Three out of four. And of course the real fun stuff happens when the answers to these four questions demand that we compromise between them. When the answer to one question gets in the way of an answer to another question. And so, for example, Tsipi Livni, a former politician, talked of a two-state solution, how Israel must promote a process of two separate nation states, which includes giving up the right of the Jewish people to certain parts of the land of Israel, effectively the parts which are defined by the Green Line. And so she's saying we should be safe, we should both be people, we should be free, but we need to divide the land. The late Edward Said talked about sharing the land in a truly democratic way with equal rights for all citizens and ignoring any national differences. Well, if we get the people out of the way, then we can be free in our land. These are the ways we can place the 4HQ chip in the head, thinking through and passing Israel issues according to these four Hatikva questions. In fact, we can apply these questions 
to wherever we live, to the United States, to England, through these four questions as well. Because as we'd said, these are both Jewish questions and human questions. And in particular, the idea of a liberal nationalism or liberal democracy involves these four questions of security, of some form of peoplehood, nationhood, of freedom and of territory. Let's talk about coronavirus. And you can do this exercise for the country that you live in. Coronavirus in Israel presented itself as a security issue, as an issue of life and death. How can we be safe? But then at the same time, there were questions of, all right, when we were doing lockdowns or when we were wearing masks, was everybody wearing masks? Or were there different sectors who were totally ignoring these kind of directions and therefore endangering everybody else, including themselves. It also presented itself as a question of freedom, of course. I'm locked in my house. I'm not allowed to go out. How dare the government do this to me? What about wearing masks? And eventually this tipped into questions of borders as well. So Jews living across the green line in Judea, Samaria, the West Bank, would receive a vaccine. But Palestinians over the Green Line in Judea, Samaria, West Bank, did not receive a vaccine. So it was something to do with some combination between Arzainu, our land, and who is our people. So in the end, the coronavirus, similar to other crucial issues, was these four questions representing a clash, a dispute, which is going on at the heart of what it is we want to be as a country. I would suggest Zionism is the ongoing attempt to implement the best answers to the four Hatikva questions. And bearing in mind that freedom is one of those four questions, the way that we decide what are the best answers is through democracy. And it's true that in the 14 and a half seconds when I don't feel cynical going to the polling booth, I do believe that when I'm going to vote, I am voting for the best answers to these four questions. And of course, the challenge always is in democratic societies is that sometimes other people have different answers to these same questions that we share. 4HQ gives us a simple way to grasp the complexity. It doesn't avoid politics and doesn't fetishize them either. It gives a holding form to the tension between Hillel's questions and speaks human and Jewish. This is just the introduction to an entire approach that is appropriate for your congregation, your school, your organization. What's it good for? First of all, discourse management. Let's say you're in conflict in your community, in your Hillel. A way of having a conversation about Israel is first of all to clarify how are you answering these four questions? How am I answering these four questions? It might be that you're only answering one question and I'm answering a totally different question, which is why it feels like we're talking at parallel lines. Mapping. It's worthwhile looking at the programming, the events that your organization is laying on and check whether you're not putting an emphasis on one question over another. Quite often it seems that left-leaning organizations place more emphasis on asking the question of freedom and human rights and put less emphasis on on questions of security and vice versa. A right-leaning organization tends to put far more emphasis on security and survival and less focus on human rights, freedoms and so on. It's a way of clarifying messaging. If I'm having a conversation or a sermon or an introductory speech or a newsletter, it's worthwhile making sure that I'm gonna cover all four of these questions. My curriculum can be built around these four Hatikva questions. We already have several whole school curricula with lesson plans built up according to these four questions, making sure that the younger kids deal with the questions in separation. And the older you develop, the more we deal with how these questions and how the answers to these questions overlap, blend and clash. If you're building an itinerary for a trip to Israel, Use the 4HQ as a way of planning your trip and a way of debriefing at the end of each day. And finally, when you're looking at celebrating Israel on Yom Ha'atzmaut, Israel Independence Day, again, this is what we're celebrating. We're celebrating that three years after the end of the Holocaust, the Jewish people were able to say yes 
to these four questions. When we celebrate Israel, we celebrate the four Hatikva exclamation marks. And for 364 days in the rest of the year, we engage with the questions behind them. And that's it. We always need to have in mind these four questions when we're examining Israel. And also, every video worth its salt must end with a cat. Giving credit once again to Makom, the Israel Education Lab of the Jewish Agency, where I first worked with a brilliant team from Makom on these ideas of 4HQ.